Okay, so now I'm going to work out a couple of examples of using the time evolution operator to uh, find our state gets as a function of time. So the first one I'll do is to solve the problem of a spin one half particle in a magnetic field that we originally solved with the Schrodinger equation. And we'll see how much simpler it is when we use the time evolution operator. So our Hamiltonian in that case, it didn't depend on time. So we can use this simpler expression for the time evolution operator. And so that's just e to the I minus i h times t over h bar. So if I plug in my expression for h here, it becomes this. And so what, uh, what we can do is just say, well, the time evolution or the, uh, the, our state ket as a function of time is just going to be our time evolution operator applied to our initial state ket. And we're going to assume that our initial state is written like this. So the initial coefficients of the two kets are c plus of zero and c minus of zero. And we're applying this operator. And this is easy to work out because remember from the last linear algebra video, I have uh, a, this operator here that is a function of SZ. And I have my state expanded in terms of the eigenkets of SZ. And we know that this operator will, uh, or that these states will be uh, eigenstates of this operator with eigenvalue of just this function evaluated at the eigenvalue of the corresponding state. So basically when I act this operator on plus, I will just get uh, this z, sz will be an h bar over two. And so h bar will cancel. And so I'll get this. And then similarly, when I act this operator on this state, sz will just become minus h bar over two. So I get this. And that is it. We're done. So uh, in just two lines, and I, I guess I could have done it in one longer line, we've solved this problem. Whereas before, you know, we used the Schrodinger equation and we got a coupled system of differential equations that we had to solve. And it wasn't too bad, but this is certainly much easier. So now let's do a more complicated problem. Now I'm going to choose uh, a, so one thing, I'll make a time dependent magnetic field. So we'll just say it's growing linearly in time proportional to T. And we're also going to make it uh, point in the X direction. So it's easy to work out the Hamiltonian in that case, it, it will be the same thing. It's just B is a function of time. And now instead of uh, being proportional to the SC operator, since it's in the X direction, it'll be proportional to the SX operator. And so we can do, so we, so because the Hamiltonian is now time dependent, we have to use our more general expression. So we have the integral of the Hamiltonian. And since, you know, it's just proportional to time, we can do this integral very easily. We'll just get a t squared over two. And uh, yeah, and so we have this, and we have an SX up here. So we can, uh, you know, let's say we're given that our initial state is still this state, uh, you know, expanded in terms of our SC eigenkets. So our time, uh, our state as a function of time will just be our time evolution operator applied to our initial state. And we can't do anything yet because we have this function that it's a function of SX but our state is expanded in terms of the SC kets. So I have to rewrite my state in terms of the SX eigenkets, because then we'll know how this operator acts on those kets. So that's easy enough to do. We can, so I said before what SX and S, SX plus and SX minus were in terms of SC plus and SC minus. And if you invert those relations, you get basically the same kind of relations. Uh, for SC plus in terms of the SX kets and SC minus in terms of the SX kets. And so using this, we can, you know, just plug these in here. And so we'll get, uh, we'll get this. And then you can just, 
I guess you can just work it out. So I'll have, you know, four terms. And so my this operator acting on the sx kit, well, I'll just, it'll just make this sx become h bar over 2. And when I act on the s minus, sx minus cats, I'll get a minus h bar over 2. So I just, you know, do the corresponding thing for each of these cats. And I get this. And then you can, um, you know, factor things out, factor everything. I have two terms involving my sx plus and two involving my sx minus. So what you get is this. So the algebra gets a little bit messy, but it's nothing, nothing too bad. And it's certainly easier uh, than solving the Schrodinger equation in this case. In this case, the Schrodinger equation would become much more complicated because, you know, the solution that you'd have to get is e to the, you know, uh, t squared, something like that. So the differential equations become much more complicated. But uh, using the time evolution operator, it's comparatively much, much simpler. So we have our uh, state cat as a function of time, expanded in terms of the sx kets. If I wanted to, you know, maybe I wanted, I would want my uh, state as a function of time expanded in the SC plus and minus cats, and that's easy enough to do. You can just write out the SC cats, uh, our expressions that we have, if you wanted to do that.